Hey everyone, it's Bradley Bush with another algebra video. Today we're talking about multiplying complex numbers. Our to-do list, first off, what is a complex number? We'll talk about A plus BI form and give you a little bit of uh, a review on that. Then we'll review the imaginary unit I, just in case you're not sure what I means. We don't want you to be confused also about that. And then we'll give you a couple of examples of multiplying complex numbers. I'll also put the timestamps for each of these parts in the video details so you can skip ahead if you like. All right, big picture. Complex numbers. Complex numbers deals with really everything that you have come across yet in your algebra experience. So complex numbers is the most inclusive group. And then inside of complex numbers, we have two smaller subgroups called real numbers and imaginary numbers. So all complex numbers have a real and imaginary part. Sometimes those are zero, but they, they still exist. So real numbers are complex numbers. Imaginary numbers are complex numbers. And as we go down our list here, as we move downward, we become, the groups become less inclusive. So Natural numbers are part of the whole numbers, which are part of the integers, which are part of the rationals, which are part of the reals, which are part of the complex. So just so you can see how that flows. So complex numbers um, can be broken down into two groups, real numbers and imaginary numbers. Imaginary numbers are the numbers that have the I included with them, and real numbers do not have the I, so it's everything else. So the real numbers are broken down into two smaller groups, or I should say two, uh, two other groups. They're all infinite, so I don't want to be comparing infinities here. But the real numbers can be broken down into two other groups. The rationals, which are any number that can be written as a ratio or a fraction of two integers, like one half, uh, like 5 over 1, like 3 fourths. And if it cannot be written as a fraction with two integers, then they consider it irrational. So those are the two groups that the real numbers can be broken down into. An example of an irrational number is pi. So the rationals then have a smaller, uh, another subgroup, which is called the integers. The integers are numbers like negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and so forth. Then we come down again to the whole numbers, which knocks off the negative integers, and we just have 0 on up. And then we can go down even further, and we can knock off the 0, and we just have what we call the natural numbers. So all of those numbers are complex. So that's your big picture. That's what we're talking about when we talk about a complex number. All of those. Standard form for a complex number is A plus BI. The A part is the real part, and the BI part is the imaginary part. Even though the A and the B, the numbers themselves, the A and the B are real numbers. Um, I is the imaginary unit, and the imaginary unit we will talk about in a second, but before I need to tell you, standard form for a complex number is written this way, A plus BI, with the A in front, meaning the real number in front, and the imaginary part second. All right, well, what is the imaginary unit I? Well, the imaginary unit I is defined as the square root of negative 1. If we square both sides of this definition, that gives us a second part, i squared equals negative 1. Those two are used all of the time. In fact, let me show you. We'll, get, we'll show you how these are used um, very soon. So when we're dealing with imaginary numbers, we generally want to change everything to i form. And what that means is that this negative inside can come out in front and be an i. So oftentimes, so I, I've showed all of the steps here of how it happens. 
So the negative b becomes negative 1 times b, and then we split up the radicals to have negative 1 by itself, and that negative square root of negative 1 is the same thing as i, and we end up getting our end result. But most of the time, students just do those middle two steps in their head, and they go from the first step to the second step. Sorry, the last step. This last step, by the way, is called the principal square root of a negative number, just for your information. So let's give you an example here. Negative, the square root of negative 25. That negative can come out as an i, according to our property here. So we have i times the square root of 25. The square root of 25 is 5. And I'm going to write that 5 in front, just because it is that is standard form. So the square root of negative 25 is 5i. Now let's talk about multiplying complex numbers. So the good thing is this is a lot like multiplying polynomials. But there are a couple things you have to remember. Your answer needs to be, in the end, in a plus bi form. And if you ever have any i squareds, you need to replace those with negative 1 or i cubes, or any power of i greater than 1 needs to be rewritten using uh, an equivalent form. So let's show you two examples. Our first example here is 5i times 3 minus 2i. Now we just multiply that through, and 5i times 3 gives us 15i. The 5i times negative 2i gives us negative 10 i squared and we know what the i squared is right this i squared is the same thing as negative one so we replace it with negative one and we get 15 i and the negative one negative 10 give us plus 10 so we want to rewrite this now as standard form so the real part goes in front so we have 10 plus 15 i and that's our answer Our second, our second example here looks just like a foiling problem with polynomials. And in fact, it is just like a foiling problem. So if we take the 6, multiply it by the first number here, second number there, what do we get? So 6 times 1 is 6. And then 6 times 4i, we'll write that down here. And then we also have this second number that gets multiplied by everything. So we have negative 2i times 1 and negative 2i times 4i. And if we do some simplifying here, what do we get? 6. Actually, I'm going to do it above. 6 and then plus 24i and negative 2i and negative 8i squared. So the 24i and the negative 2i give us negative 22i. So we'll have 6 and negative 22, or positive 22i. And then the, remember the i squared, this really equals negative 1. So negative 8 times negative 1 is positive 8. And the 8 and the 16 give us 14. So that gives us 14 plus 22i. And we're done. So multiplying complex numbers is pretty straightforward. It's a lot like multiplying polynomials. You just have to remember that if once you're done with i and you're treating i just like you would treat a variable, if you have a power of i greater than 1, then you need to rewrite it so that it's in uh, an equivalent form with a power less than or equal to one. If this is helpful, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment. Um, have a good day. Thanks for watching.